Merry Christmas, everyone. Hope you're having a great day. We have completed now, today completes our whole reflection on Pope Francis's apostolic exhortation, the joy of the gospel. And what a, could there be a more fitting way to end the apostolic exhortation and for us to celebrate Christmas than by turning to Mary, whom the Holy Father refers to in this section as the mother of evangelization. Mary, mother of evangelization. And he dedicates the last four paragraphs uh, to our Blessed Mother, her role in the life of the Church, and her role in this work of evangelization. The Holy Father begins in paragraph 284 <clears throat> by noting that Mary is always present in the midst of the people. She joined the disciples in praying for the coming of the Holy Spirit at the Pentecost, in the upper room, the Seneca, and she made possible the missionary outburst which took place at Pentecost. She is the mother of the church which evangelizes, and without her, we could never truly understand the spirit of the new evangelization. So Mary is key to help us to understand the spirit of the new evangelization. He's going to break that open. <clears throat> and what we're going to see here is a balance between contemplation, love, and tenderness. First, he talks about this gift that the Lord Jesus has given us and his mother, that at the foot of the cross, in that supreme moment, of sacrifice, that supreme hour of the new creation, Christ Jesus leads us to Mary. He gives Mary to be our mother and invites her to take her into the home of our hearts. The Lord, Pope Francis says, did not want us to journey without a mother. And so he gives us our mother, the church. He gives us our blessed mother to accompany us on our pilgrimage path to the kingdom of heaven. He goes on in paragraph 286 to talk about all the attributes of Mary in, in the in what we know from the scriptures, right? That Mary turns a stable into a home for Jesus in Bethlehem. How Mary is the handmaid of the Lord who sings his praises at the visitation. Mary's a friend uh, who is ever concerned would that wine not be lacking in our lives, the wedding feast at Cana. She's the woman whose heart was pierced by a sword and who understands all of our pain. Think of the, the, the prophet's prophetic word from Zechariah. As mother of all, Mary is a, a sign of hope for people suffering the birth pangs of justice. She's the missionary who draws near to us and accompanies us throughout our life, opening our hearts to faith by her maternal love. As a true mother, she walks at our side. She shares our struggles. She constantly surrounds us with God's love. Through her many titles, often linked to her shrines, Mary shares the history of each people which has received the gospel, and she becomes part of their historic identity. So, based on what little we know of Mary in the Gospels, there's not a ton written about her, but what we, we do observe, a woman, our Blessed Mother, who played a very important role in the life of Jesus Christ, for Christ comes to us through Mary, and He, the Lord, in, by giving to us to her at the foot of His cross, shows us that He wants us to come to her, to Him, through Mary as well. And how Mary is forever faithful and accompanies us, just like she accompanied her son along His passion and death to the resurrection. All of this is an important backdrop for us as we contemplate this next little section called the Star of the New Evangelization. Mary is the star of the New Evangelization. Think of the star that led the three wise men, the three magi, to Bethlehem to adore the Lord as they brought their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Mary is the star of the New Evangelization who points us, who directs us, who guides us, who leads us to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He says in 287, we ask the mother of the living of the living gospel, we ask the mother of the living gospel to intercede that this invitation to a new phase of evangelization will be accepted by the entire ecclesial community. So we're first asking Mary to pray for us. Mary is so close to the Lord. She is at her son's side right now in heaven, where she intercedes before her son's throne, before his majesty. She prays for us always. And the Holy Father is saying, we need to ask her to pray for us that the entire church will take up this challenge, this burden, this opportunity to be missionary disciples. Mary is the woman of faith who lives and advances in faith. And her exceptional pilgrimage of faith represents a constant point of reference for the church. Remember, Mary was roughly 13 years of old when the Archangel Gabriel appeared to her and asked her to become the mother of the Son of God when she wasn't living with Joseph yet. Mary steps out in faith and trusts God. She steps out her, of her comfort zone into the hands of the loving God, trusting Him, seeking to do His will above all else. 
She goes before us as a powerful example of faith, of what it means to walk by faith. We ask her to pray for us that we would have the same kind of faith in following the Lord Jesus. Mary let herself be guided by the Holy Spirit on a journey of faith towards the, a destiny of service and fruitfulness. Mary's service is fruitful. It bears fruit. It bears abundant fruit for the kingdom. Today we look to her and ask her help to help us proclaim the message of salvation to all and to enable new disciples to become evangelizers in turn. He goes on. Along this journey of evangelization, we will have moments of aridity, darkness, and even fatigue. And Mary experienced these things during the years of Jesus' childhood in Nazareth. Think about that, right? So there's nothing that we go, go through or experience that she didn't experience as well. But Mary shows us and gives us the example and the model in her motherly prayers and her presence in our lives to help us to persevere through those things, to cling to the truth of Jesus and to continue, keep on carrying our cross and following and doing what God is asking us to do in this hour. Mary, for many years, lived in intimacy with the mystery of her son and went forward in her pilgrimage of faith. We got to remember, like, things were, Mary's existence in her life was not a, one of uh, all roses and everything great. Like, Mary, you know, walking in the mystery of her son's cross didn't have all the answers. It was her faith that guided her and helped her to cling and live and walk by faith to live in God's will. She gives us a powerful example and she prays for us. In 288, the Holy Father says, There is a Marian style to the church's work of evangelization. What's the Marian style? Whenever we look to Mary, we come to believe once again in the revolutionary nature of love and tenderness. So this is the Holy Father's focus here, right? So he's saying that the Marian style of evangelization is one that's marked by love and tenderness. In Mary, we see that humility and tenderness are not virtues of the weak, but of the strong, who need not treat others poorly in order to feel themselves important, right? So humility and tenderness is not are not virtues of weakness, but rather virtues of the strong, right? That, that we see ourselves before the Lord just as we are, that all is gift, and that we allow the Lord's grace to shape our lives so that we may love people with God's tenderness. Contemplating Mary, we realize that she who praised God for bringing down the mighty from their thrones and sending the rich away empty is also the one who brings a homely warmth to our pursuit of justice. Think about that. A homely warmth to our pursuit of justice. She is also the one who carefully keeps all these things and pondering them in her heart. This is the contemplative spirit of Mary. Mary is able to recognize the traces of God's spirit in events great and small. She constantly contemplates the mystery of God in our world, in human history, and in our daily lives. Isn't that beautiful? So like she teaches us that we would have that to contemplative glance to see where is God working, how is God working in the world today, in, in the people around us and in our lives, right? So pondering the works of God around us, not just seeing that the glass is always half empty, but to see the other side and how God is at work, half full. And that ties in with this part on intercessory prayer, right? And giving thanks for the graces of God that are at work in people's lives. Mary is the woman of prayer and work in Nazareth. It's not either or, it's both and, prayer and work. And she is also Our Lady of Help who sets out from her town with haste to be of service to others. This interplay of justice and tenderness, contemplation and concern for others, is what makes the ecclesial community look to Mary as a model of evangelization. I'll say that again, right? The interplay of justice and tenderness, contemplation and concern for others. Justice and tenderness, contemplation, concern for others. These characteristics provide a model for evangelization. We implore her Mary's maternal intercession that the church may become a home for many peoples, a mother for all peoples, and that the way may be opened to birth of a new world. Isn't that beautiful? It is the risen Christ who tells us with a power that fills us with confidence and unshakable hope. Behold, I make all things new. With Mary... We advance confidently towards the fulfillment of this promise. So that's it. We cap it off with turning to our Blessed Mother Mary, who provides for us a great model of this pilgrimage of faith, tenderness, justice, compassion, love, concern for others, contemplation. Mary provides for us some central characteristics for evangelization. And most especially, she's our dear Heavenly Mother who accompanies us and prays for us. That concludes our reflections of the Holy Father's Apostolic Exhortation, the joy of the Gospel. I hope it was a blessing to you um, as you made your way to this Christmas Day. 
And as we go forward now in the glory and the light of Christmas, may we take all that the Holy Father has taught us, may it be integrated in our lives, and may we be open agents, vessels of the new evangelization, bringing the joy of the gospel to others, not being afraid to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us as he wills for the glory of God and the salvation of souls. And may Almighty God bless you this Christmas day, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Merry Christmas.